Hi, I'm Cole, and I, uh, I wanted to take a look at the MG GT before I do some welding on the transmission for my Volvo C70. They welded some patches in on this side, similar to how they were on the other side, but they did better surface preparation right here so the welds look nicer. Right now they're putting in some panels that go on the back, on the inside of that apron over there. He's welding that, my dad's welding that one into place right now. There's some nice looking spot welds right there. They've got good penetration. Spot welder is nice and clean. You know, it does spot welds really nice and quick. That's the box that they're building for the passenger side. It looks like it's all welded up. There's the firewall. It looks pretty good. This right here looks nice. Those curves look nice and clean. And that joint between the two pieces of metal is nice. They took out the pedal assembly, the pedal box. And it looks like they, uh, they must have done something so they could remove that little box that was there to give that bearing clearance. It's always kind of lousy when you have to do rework because that would have been a nice clean piece of sheet metal right there if that box wouldn't have been put in and then taken back out. These areas right here, well, these areas are where the headers go for the engine because the engine will be in this area right here. And then the exhaust headers will come out through here and then the wheel will be right in here and some other suspension stuff and the cross member. But um, something's going to happen in here, but it, we won't be able to figure that out until after the engine's in, the headers are installed, and the front cross members back in place so that measurements can be taken to figure out how to fill in some of that area. Here's the driver's side where those patches were put in. And this section was welded in also. The steering column is sitting in there now. I think it's out of a Nissan Altima or a Maxima. I'm not sure. I can't really remember. And that's what the, the inside of the firewall looks like over there. There's still some more welding and some finishing to do because all of these welds are going to have to have some seam sealer put around them. Those welds look really nice right there on that part of the roll bar. <clears throat> This is my Volvo C70 convertible. Today I machined the pilot bearing that goes right there on the end of the crankshaft and I put in my rear main seal. Tomorrow I'm going to bolt my flywheel in place and put some Loctite on those bolts and then put the transmission back in and start putting everything back together. This is what I'm working on this evening. I've got a hole in the metal right there. What happened was, when I was making this shift plate, I drilled these holes right here in the shift plate, and then I also drilled a hole in the shifter, and then I drilled a second one. The first time I drilled the second one, it lined up, and both these holes and these holes were the same size. But then when I went to tap this hole on this part of the shifter, I broke the tap. So I drilled a second hole. When I drilled the second hole, I had to make these larger so that it would line up. Then when I tried to tap that second hole, I used an older tap that was used and it just, it snapped. So then I had two taps broken off in this part of the shifter. And I tried to drill them out. I tried to drill around them. I was using cutting wheels and carbide bits and drill bits and it was just, it was a mess. I got out as much of the tap as I can. So now what I'm going to do is I set up my arc well, my carbon arc torch. This is the power side. This is the ground. This one's supported by a vise. This one is supported by a vise. So when I lower this electrode down in there, <clears throat> I can have one electrode there. And then lower this one down in there at the same time. When those electrodes come within a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch of each other, 
then an arc will start between them. When I have that arc started, then I'll be melting these beads of braise, brazing rod. I'll put the beads of brazing rod in there a couple of them at a time and then put these carbons down in there and start the arc and melt it all into place and be able to adjust this one up and down. After I get a, like three of those brazing rod beads melted in there, then I'll take both of these pieces of the torch out of the vices and just do it by hand to finish it off. You know, I would have just started that arc and fed a brazing rod in there, but the arc isn't really big enough. I mean, my carbon arc torch has some power, but it doesn't have enough to produce a big enough arc for me to do any brazing yet. So what I did was I just mel melted this brazing rod when I was practicing, and I kept those little bowls of melted br molten brazing rod. So that's what I'm going to put in there as my filler and fill in this hole. I've already brazed a few other things using the same technique like that. I did this piece, you can see where it's got that bronzish, goldish tint right there. That's the brazing filler rod. And I don't see the other piece that I used. I brazed some copper too. But yeah, so that's what I'm going to start doing right now so that I can put this transmission back in tomorrow. You know, like I could have filled that hole all up with MIG wire and just use the MIG welder to fill it in, but trying to drill into weld is really difficult because the tensile strength of the weld is so, so dense and so hard that it's hard to drill into. Where by way of comparison, these brazing rods, at least they say they're machinable. So, I don't know where I'm going to end up having to put another hole in this shifter to make my short shifter, but either way, having that brazing rod in there instead of MIG wire will make it easier to machine later on down the road when I install a short shifter.